Today, I'm going to share with you my experience of making kombucha. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa West and welcome to Thirsty Thursdays. Today, we're going to talk about kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea made from a colony of bacteria and yeast called a SCOBY. The tea originated in Northeast China and spread to Russia and from there, the rest of the world. Kombucha is said to aid in digestion with its probiotics, fight cancer with glucaric acid, strengthen your immune system with antioxidants, boost your energy with enzymes and vitamin Bs, B vitamins, detoxify your body with gluconic acid and probiotics, and ease joint pain and help with arthritis with, it, with its glucosamines. So I'm going to link to some posts on making kombucha that I found helpful when I got started. I decided to go with the continuous brew method because I really like kombucha, so I just wanted to, to, to go all the time. So I'm going to link to a continuous brew method, but also to the post that um, I found really the most helpful getting started. Um, so those will both be in the show notes. And um, what you're going to need is a really large container. It has to hold 16 cups of liquid. So the only, I kind of looked around for that and uh, we're moving in a few months. So <laughs> the largest container I had was my crock pot, which I wouldn't really recommend because it has a really large surface area. So really what would be better is a, a tall container that has a, a less large surface area because the SCOBY is going to grow to fill the surface of the container and you're going to get more fizz and ferment. Like if you want your kombucha fizzy, I think you're going to get better fizz with a less big surface area. So I would recommend that. Um, so when I move, I'm going to look for a bigger jar and I've seen them around, so you'll be able to find something. Also, you're going to need something to cover it. Now, most posts I've seen recommend cheesecloth, but I've done just fine with a clean dishcloth. I haven't had any problems with mold, and I just laid it over top. It hasn't fallen into it at all. Um, I've also seen that, you know, you know, take a elastic band. Well, I haven't had an elastic band big enough to cover this, but it hasn't fallen in at all. And it's sitting here, and it's a pretty high traffic area in my kitchen, so it's fine. You're going to choose the kind of tea that you're going to use. So my SCOBY came from a mother that was made with um, decaffeinated green tea matcha tea. So, you know, the great thing about making your own kombucha, and the reason why often I can't drink what's in the stores, and I'm really sensitive to caffeinated teas. So I'm able to make my own at home with decaffeinated tea. So I've chosen to make mine from Earl Grey rooibos and it's really yummy like that. So you can make it from yerba mate, um, black tea, green tea, herbal teas, whatever you want. So you can knock yourself out. So what you're going to need is a scoby or a baby. So I had my baby with my best friend, uh, one of my best friends, Stephanie. So that was really fun. We're like, oh, we had a baby together. <laughs> But you can get your SCOBY on the internet too, which is kind of weird too. <laughs> that just cracks me up. <laughs> get your baby on the internet. <laughs> um, so I'll link to this place where you can get your baby on the internet, your SCOBY. Um, and can you believe this? You need sugar. Oh, gasp, sugar. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, um, we're making something with sugar in it. But actually, the SCOBY, the mother eats all the sugar, so there hardly be any sugar left when you're done. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. So here's everything that you're going to need. You're going to need a really big container that'll hold 16 cups of water. You're going to need a clean dish towel, seven tea bags, um, four cups of boiling water, a cup of sugar. You're going to need a SCOBY. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, one and a half cups of fresh brewed kombucha. Your, your, your baby will come in that, whoever gives it to you or your starter kit, and nine cups of cold filter water. So what you're going to do to start is you're going to boil four cups of water and brew your tea in it so it's nice and strong. And I already did that so that it's had a chance to cool down too because when you add your tea to your kombucha, to your mother or your baby, you don't want it to be so hot that it's going to kill off the live bacterial culture in it. So I did that, and what I'm gonna do now is just take the tea bags out of here to add the cup of sugar to it. And then you can add your sugar. You could use organic cane sugar, 
I have just been using regular old white death sugar <laughs> because my scoby's going to eat it anyway. You can use, um, I was reading up on this a little bit more before I did this post, you can use molasses to, you can't use honey because honey has its own bacteria in it. It will compete with the SCOBY, so don't use honey. Okay, so that's pretty much dissolved in there. And this is cooled down quite a bit, but just to make sure it's not too hot that it's going to destroy my mother. Because I'm going to do continuous brew, but I'm going to pull out the baby so you can see the baby from here. I'm going to add some cooler water to this as well. So you need nine cups of water as well. So I'll just measure out four more cups in here. And it's really important that all your, your pots and utensils are clean. Okay, so let's put this aside. Now is the fun part. You get to see this. Is, this is the science part. The science project part. This is the part that makes Tim and Trinity just go, oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> okay, so you can see across the top, this is the mother. And she, see how she's covered the whole top? And she'll go back on the top when we uh, take away some of the tea. So for the continuous brew method, what I'm going to do, and I won't do this the whole time I'm on the camera, but I'm going to take off pretty much everything about except for about a cup and a half across the bottom or maybe about a quarter of this on the bottom and when I do that and I won't spend the whole time on the camera doing that um, the she'll have had a baby <laughs> underneath this and the baby will will start to separate once once I remove more of this kombucha so I'll, I'll, once the baby reveals itself, we'll turn the camera back on. Okay, we had a little trouble finding the baby because the baby is big. Okay, so here's the mother. It's hard to tell which one is which, to be honest. Here's the baby. This might be the mother, to be honest. I, I'm not really sure, but I'm going to call this one the mother because she's a little thicker. And this one the baby, but look at the size of this baby. That's unusual. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put this one aside and if that's unusual, that's really big, except for that I do have a big container, so maybe it's not that unusual. I'm going to put that one aside and if any of my friends want to start com their own kombucha, they can start their own kombucha now. So I put that in about a cup of water and then you can see I've kept about a quarter of, a, a quarter of the liquid in the bottom. And I might just ladle out a little bit more of that so that I can add in more. And then I'm going to add in my tea mixture to this. And basically then I've started again. Okay, so now I'm going to pour in our tea and sugar mixture. And basically because of the size, because this is a continuous brew, I'm just going to top it up with water to the amount that my container will allow me. And then what I'm going to do is I will cover it again with my towel so that no air no particles of food or whatever get into it and I'll let this go again for another at least a week seven days my last batch went for about 10 days so it can go for that long and um, then I have my uh, kombucha here so I'm gonna enjoy my kombucha now so thanks so much I'd love to hear about your experience of making kombucha you can leave it in the comments below if you have any questions too thanks so much for watching